Hello, my beautiful human. I am so excited for today's episode because I've been having this conversation a lot with many of my clients where they feel like they have to pick one thing or the other. Now, we feel like this with a lot of things in our life, but this conversation is specifically talking about pursuing a passion while still having a full-time job, right? There's so much fear and imposter syndrome and doubt when it comes to doing anything outside of your daily routine, right? your job, your role as a stay-at-home mom or as a full-time employee. And we have so many different myths that exist. So today's episode is all going to be about how to actually pursue your passion without leaving your full-time job because I'm here to tell you, you are truly holding yourself back if you do not pursue your passion while you have a full-time job. Like, don't do that to yourself. If I, when I look back to working at Yahoo, my biggest regret, like truly, my biggest regret is not pursuing my passion or my dreams while I had a full-time job. Like, I really, really wish that I spent more time diving into the things that I love to do, working with more brands, building more relationships, building more community, uh, maybe even doing coaching and consulting while I was still working at Yahoo. And many of us tend to wait until we hit rock bottom or we hit a wall or back is against the wall when we get laid off or we have this massive shift or pivot in our life happen for us to actually do it, right? Like, For me, it was the layoff. I waited until I was laid off and for me to dive into building empowered confidence. Like it took a layoff for me to say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take a larger risk, right? Because it's such a larger risk for you to pursue your dream without someone else paying you versus pursuing your dreams while you have a full-time job. Like you have a salary, you have have a paycheck coming in that is guaranteed to an extent. Um, So why not? And so the myth that we are going to debunk is that you have to leave your full-time job to pursue your passion. The truth is you do not. And I'm here to tell you that you do not. And if you are truly at a company that values you, they will provide you with the time to have work-life harmony, right? Because I don't believe in balance, but you will be able to breathe after your quote unquote shift ends, right? And you should, you should implement that boundary, but that's a whole nother episode. You actually, you end up showing up as a better employee, as a better partner, mother, and honestly, overall human, if you allow yourself to pursue the things that you love to pursue your passions, to go after your dreams. And I want to remind you, and I I want to really, 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 really hone in on this. Whether you have a full-time job or not, that feeling of fear, self-doubt, imposter syndrome will always be there. When you are doing something that is new. When you are putting yourself out there, you will tr- you will feel that fear. You will start thinking, well, what what are people going to think? What are my friends going to think? What is, you know, Josh from elementary school that I've never spoken to? What is he going to think on Facebook? <laughs> right? We like really freak out about what others think and who the hell cares? Who cares? <laughs> But seriously, like who cares? It is our life and we only have so many days on this earth, right? We don't know what that number is. So let's freaking do it, right? And don't forget this episode, this podcast is called She Did It Anyway. So with the fear, with the self-doubt, with the imposter syndrome, with the not perfect plan, with the job, do it anyway. And so let's just dive in. Where are we going to start? Where to start? So you know me, you know, your girl loves a good brain dump. Whenever you are thinking about anything and you have this lack of clarity of, oh my God, where do I start? You start with a brain dump, literally dump every single thing in your head on paper. That is where you start. And with this brain dump, it's going to help you gain clarity in what ideas you have. So really start thinking about what 
like when I think when I think about my dreams, when I think about my passions, what ideas come to life? What do I love to do? And I do want to remind you that yes, you'll gain some clarity in this brain dump, but the, you will not gain ultimate clarity, like true clarity without actually taking action. Okay. So don't be so hard on yourself if you quote unquote can't figure it out right away because it takes action. It takes you trying things. And I'm going to tell you a story. When I got laid off, I brain dumped and I really felt called to pursue lifestyle content creation. I was like, I want to be a blogger. I've always had this dream and passion of being a blogger. So I want to do it. And I took the leap and I did it, right? I started posting about my life. I started posting about products that I like to use. I started posting about places that Matt and Sebastian and I went. I started creating lifestyle content. And I realized very quickly, once I took that action, the clarity that I gained from that was I hated it. (laughs) I hated it so much. I was like, I can't do this. I can't post about another dress. I can't post about another hotel that I'm at. Like, I just can't do this. And I, I was pretty upset, to be honest, if I'm being honest, I was upset that I realized that I didn't like it because I thought that was my dream. But I then shifted my mindset and I'm like, wait, this is so cool that I took action and I real I the clarity that I got was not the clarity that I expected. And that alone is life changing because it really allows you to evolve. Like shame on us for thinking that we have to stick with what we say we're going to do even after we gain clarity on hating it right? Gary V says this amazing quote of, we put ourselves in this jail where we say to our friends, we're going to be doctors. And so we go to med school and we become doctors and we hate it. But because we already told our friends and our family that we're going to be a doctor, we spend the rest of our life being a doctor that we hate and we're miserable and our patients hate us because we are so angry showing up and we put ourselves in this jail. So do not put yourself in a jail when you do not need to be. Okay. I went off on a tangent. Let's get back. So I took that action. I realized that lifestyle content creation was not for me. And so I did another brain dump. So this is really circling back to where to start. You do your brain dump, you gain clarity. You then start focusing on building that personal brand with or without a job. You should be building your personal brand. Like I cannot say this enough. Your personal brand is simply what people know you for at work, outside of work, your friends, your family, the barista at Starbucks, your dry cleaning people like that is your personal brand. It's what people know you for. It is what they say about you when you are not around. It is what they think of when they think of you. So this leads me to my question. I want you to ask yourself, what do you want people to know you for? What do you want people to know you for? When they think of Rosa Bauer, it's my best friend. What do what does Rosa Bauer want people to know her for? Okay. When I think about what do I want people to know Marina Middleton for? I want them to know me for being a mom. I want them to know me for personal branding. I want them to know me for women empowerment. I want them to know me for taking care of my health. I want them to know me for this podcast. I want them to know me for being this badass bitch who gets through anything and everything, no matter who doubts her, even if the person doubting her is herself. She will freaking get through it. And I want to be known for being the woman that helps someone else get through their shit and build the life and business of their freaking dreams. Okay. This episode is all filled with tangents. (laughs) But really asking yourself, what do you want people to know you for? And start talking about those things. If you're an amazing cook and no one knows it, it doesn't matter. So best known beats best. Do you hear me? Best known beats best. Talk about the things that you love. Do not put yourself in a jail of thinking you have to talk about something specific because you have this full-time job and that is all that you do. You are not your title. You hear me? You are not your title. So after you brain dump, after you start building your personal brand, 
because it is a journey. You're not going to just build your personal brand and check it off. That is not, it's not something on the checklist where you just check it off. A personal brand is something that you are, it's your reputation. It's your, you're nurturing it throughout your whole entire life. The third thing is start playing around with what platform you want to actually show up on. Now you're showing up in person. How do you want to show up? Truly asking yourself, how do I want to show up? Start picking a platform digitally. Are you going to be on TikTok? Are you going to be on Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest? Like, where do you want to show up and not show up with this like insane strategy? Like stra- that word strategy has meaning behind it. Or people think that when you hear strategy, it means like complicated and intense and overwhelm. It's just not. Literally, your strategy could very much be showing up on social and posting like without that is your strategy. Posting is a strategy. <laughs> but thinking about what platform you really enjoy and like you just want to have fun on. If it's TikTok and you're showing silly videos, if it's LinkedIn and you're writing articles, if it's Pinterest and you're creating these beautiful boards, if it's Instagram where you're creating reels or even posting static images, showing up on stories, whatever it is, pick a platform that works for you. Okay. And start sharing content about things that you love. Again, this could be anything, quotes that you love, um, food recipes, outfits, whatever it is that you love. What you'll notice is, especially if this is something new, people are going to start reaching out to you and be like, wait, I love that. I didn't know you liked this. Oh my God, I didn't know you you love to cook like that. Oh wait, can you send me that link? People are going to start reaching out because you are showing them a new side of you. You're showing them that you are more than just a title. You are more than a VP at a company. You are more than a sales associate. You are more than a senior account manager. You are more than that title that you hold. So let's recap. Brain dump, work on your personal brand, thinking about what do I want people to know me for? Figuring out what platform you want to have fun on. Do you hear what I just said? What platform do you want to have fun on? And then do another brain dump. Figure out who are the people that you want to help and what do you want to do? For example, let's say you have a passion for fashion. Mm, Rhymed. And you love piecing outfits together. And maybe you have Susan (laughs) at your job that keeps coming up to you and is every day. She's like, Rosa, I have no idea how you look so amazing every single day. I don't know how you piece those pieces together. Like, how do you put these outfits together every single day? I could never. You need to start creating content for that person, for Susan. Like, literally, that is your person. And so these could be simple, basic outfits. Maybe you're talking about basic pieces to have in your closet. Like, you are just giving advice to Susan. That is it. Don't overcomplicate it. Susan keeps asking Rosa, how does she put her outfits together. Rosa's saying, hey, Susan, this is how I do it. And you can start thinking of things that you already do in your day. So you wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy. Uh, You wake up in the morning, you get dressed and you look at yourself in the mirror. Maybe that is a time where you can take a mirror selfie or mirror outfit of the day and post it. And every single day, that is what you're going to do. That is your piece of content. That is a strategy within itself. Okay. So brain dump, really asking yourself, what do you want people to know you for? Figuring out what platform you want to have fun on and figuring out who is that person that you want to help? What question do you keep getting that you're like, I'm ready to help this person, right? I have so many Susans that come up to me and ask me about my outfit. I'm going to start sharing about my outfit because I love getting dressed. I love putting pieces together, right? Now, if you absolutely hate talking about fashion and you have Susan that's always asking you, that does not mean you then have to talk about fashion. Just because you are good at something does not mean you have to do it. Say it louder for the people in the back. Just because you are good at something does not mean you have to do it. Okay. The point is figuring out what is the thing that you love to do and are people asking you how to do that, right? Are you already positioning yourself as the expert in their head? Now we can really dive in deep on, well, how do I make money from this? Well, I want you to first ask yourself, who do you want to pay you? Do you want Susan to pay you for advice? Do you want Target to pay you for buying the outfits from there and posting about it? Do you want Susan and Target? Like really start thinking about 
how you want to work with people. Do you want to work with Susan one-on-one or do you want to simply provide free content on social and really have the brand be paying you so Susan doesn't have to, right? There's so many different options, but I want you to think of the option that works best for you. What do you want to do? Again, a lot of the times we put ourselves in these boxes of, well, I have to do consulting. I have to do coaching. I'm going to create a course. I'm going slow it down just because everybody else is doing it doesn't mean you have to. Let's figure out how you want to show up. What do you love to do? Do you love giving one-on-one advice? Then that's how you can show up. That's how you can offer your service. Do you want to simply create content on social and have your Susans receive advice through that? Amazing. So do that and get paid from the brand. There's so many different options and I want you to have fun with thinking of, well, how do I help Susan, right? So to recap, brain dump, ask yourself what I want someone to know me for, figuring out what platform you want to show up on to have fun and start thinking about who is your Susan? What is that person asking you? Who are they and how can you help them? Thinking about what you're already doing during the day that can be a staple piece of your content. So people start thinking of you when they think of outfits of the day. If you follow me on Instagram, you know, I used to put espresso, pour ice espresso into my iced coffee. I did that for so long that people started getting ice espressos and pouring them into their coffee. That was part of my morning routine. It's no longer because my heart literally almost stopped uh, because of the caffeine. It was just too much caffeine for me. Um, but figuring out what you're already doing in your day and then thinking about different ways that people can pay you. And is it going to be from the Susan? Is it going to be from the brand or vice versa? So that's the foundation. And honestly, for Empowered Confidence, we have four pillars, founder, brand, business, and marketing. In our brand and business course, we dive into this much deeper. But I really want to focus a little bit more in this episode of how you can actually schedule out your passion and your dream while you still have a full-time job, while you're a stay-at-home mom and you have all of the obligations of taking care of this human, right? So you are already figuring out your brain dumps and all of the things, but literally now it's diving into, well, like, where am I going to fit this in? I don't have the time. And we actually don't realize how much time we have in the day until we do a time and energy audit. I want you to start really thinking about what your day looks like and where you're spending a lot of your time and your energy. If you're commuting in the morning, is there anything that you could be doing to support that passion or the dream? Maybe it's listening to podcasts. Maybe it is um, doing an audio book to learn a little bit more, right? How can you take those down times where you're not at a desk or in a meeting and consume content or do something that is going to support your passion or your dream. So for my challenge for you, when it comes to diving into your schedule, I want you to start thinking about what days and times during the week can you allocate to focus on your passion and your dream? Just like a meeting, you are going to block off your calendar. So for example, we do morning brain dumps and you can listen to that in our last episode, you have your morning brain dump, then you work out, right? I'm just giving you an example of schedule. Maybe you have 30 minutes that morning. Maybe every Monday for 30 minutes, Monday mornings at 30 minutes, you're going to do one thing that is going to support your passion or your dream. So thinking about what days and times during the week you can allocate to focus on your passion and dreams and really treating it like you are in a business meeting. You are the client and you owe it to yourself to block off that time on your calendar and focus on your passion and focus on your dreams and how you're going to bring that to life. You do not have to pick this or that. So when you're thinking about blocking off that time, right? So you figured out, okay, every Monday morning for 30 minutes at this time from eight to nine, eight to eight thirty, not whatever, right? Figuring out what that time is. Tuesdays, I'm going to block off from six to seven. Wednesdays, I'm going to block off from 12 to one. You see where I'm going. You're blocking off these times, Monday through Friday. Maybe the weekends are when you dive into that. Again, 
I'm going to leave this up to you. Figure out what days and times during the week that you want to allocate to focus on your dreams and making sure that you're blocking off times to do that. So now you have your schedule, you've blocked it out. You know at these times during these days that you are going to focus on your passion and dreams. It's time to now understand what you're going to do during those times. And a lot of the time we forget that there are two different types of things you're going to do. There are projects and tasks. Okay. A lot of the times we allocate a project in 30 minutes, in an hour, and we try to finish a project rather than realizing that this project needs to be split up into tasks. So let's take content creation, for example. Content creation is a project. The tasks that go under that is writing, editing, filming, posting, engaging, right? So those are five different tasks that I just quickly gave you. Rather than thinking, okay, I'm going to create content on Monday from eight to nine. Well, what type? Think of it this way. Content creation is the task. So on Monday, I'm going to do all of my caption writing. On Tuesday, I'm going to do all of my filming. On Wednesday, I'm going to do all of my editing. On Thursday, I'm going to do all of my scheduling. And on Friday, I'm going to do all of my engaging. So now you have taken this massive project and you've split it up into different tasks. You owe it to yourself to allocate time for your dreams. No one is going to come up to you and say, hey, Marina, here is an hour. Please go focus on your dreams. No one's going to do that besides me. Please go do that. (laughs) But when you're thinking about how to pursue your passion without leaving your full time job, I want you to figure out your schedule and break up some days, allocate some days and times for your dreams and your passions. Do your brain dumps, figure out what you want people to come to you for. Again, it could be anything. Figuring out what you love to do is interior design, is it fashion, is it beauty? And then understand the projects that come along with that. And do not try to force yourself to complete projects rather than tasks break up your projects into tasks. That way, you know that that hour a day that you're allocating, you're going to do a specific thing and you're going to feel so accomplished after you do it. You're going to feel so good. And the coolest thing is pursuing your passion will provide you the energy and the motivation that you need. Like I get so fired up when I talk about personal branding. I get so fired up on my coaching calls and guest speaking calls when I'm on stage. like I know that I am pursuing something that I love to do. And because I'm so fired up, because of all that energy, I'm able to show up just such a better mom and wife and friend and daughter because I have that energy, because I'm gifting myself the opportunity to go after my dreams and passions. And there's a quote that I really love by Oprah. It is, passion is energy. Feel the power that comes from focusing on what excites you. Do not let your everyday routine burn you out to the point where you forget who you are outside of that title. Do not let your daily routine and the title that you hold make you forget about your passions and your dreams and the things that you love to do. You do not have to leave your nine to five. You very much should be building your personal brand while you have that nine to five. And when you're thinking about, well, what are people going to think? Let them think whatever they want to think. I promise you, you will be motivating so many of those people that you are so concerned about. You will inspire them to do the same exact thing. The people that you are concerned about will most likely be the first people to come to you and be like, oh my God, I can't believe you're doing this. I've been wanting to do this for so long. That fear, that overwhelm, the imposter syndrome, that doesn't go away. I want you to use that as fuel. I want you to be able to feel those feelings and say, you know what? I'm going to do it anyway because you deserve it. And I cannot wait. I cannot wait to see all of the amazing things that you do. And we're going to do this together. Like We are in this together. You hear me? So for now, I would love for you to tell me what your passion and your dream is. Like, what have you been dying to do? And I want to see if I can help you bring that to life. I'm so proud of you. You are amazing. I love you. And I will see you on the next episode. Bye.